You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 4th of May. PM Modi attends second India Nordic Summit in Copenhagen. Protests held against enforced disappearances of Baloch civilians across Pakistan. And Sri Lanka to replace unrealistic budget in talks to extend World Bank aid. And now for all the details. On the second leg of his three-nation Europe tour, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday attended the second India Nordic Summit in Copenhagen along with his counterparts from Denmark, Iceland, Finland, Sweden and Norway. The summit focused on bilateral cooperation, post-pandemic economic recovery, climate change, skill development and the evolving global security scenario. PM Modi also held separate bilateral meetings with the five Nordic leaders. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday took part in the second India Nordic Summit in Copenhagen along with his counterparts from Denmark, Iceland, Finland, Sweden and Norway. The summit focused on bilateral cooperation, post-pandemic economic recovery, climate change, innovation and technology and the evolving global security scenario. After the meeting, PM Modi on Twitter termed his Denmark visit as excellently productive and said the India Nordic Summit will go a long way in boosting India's ties with the region. Together, there is much that our nations can achieve and contribute to global prosperity and sustainable development. A very ambitious agenda of partnership, which I said earlier on, uh, will seek to combine and converge uh, the, the skill capabilities, the innovation capabilities, the technology capabilities in Nordic countries with the opportunities in India and I think will set the basis for a very strong trade, investment and technology partnerships in months and years ahead. Prior to the summit, PM Modi also held separate bilateral meetings with the Nordic leaders. The talks broadly focused on expanding collaboration in areas like blue economy, green shipping, renewable energy and infrastructure investment, among others. On his way back to India, he was scheduled to make a brief stopover in Paris to meet French President Emmanuel Macron later in the day. Pakistan remains one of the most dangerous countries for journalists. Besides fatal attacks, they face threats such as kidnappings and forced disappearances, imprisonment and torture. In a presser on World Press Freedom Day on Tuesday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said restrictions on freedom of expression undermine Pakistan's image and its ability to progress. He underlined that U.S. takes up the issue with Pakistan at regular intervals. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Tuesday said that restrictions on freedom of expression undermine Pakistan's image and its ability to progress. Speaking at a news conference organized by Washington Foreign Press Center on World Press Freedom Day, Blinken said that the U.S. government was aware of the restrictions imposed on media outlets and civil society in Pakistan and highlighted this issue with his Pakistani counterpart. He was responding to a question by a Pakistani journalist over Pakistan being among those countries in the world still considered the most dangerous place for journalists. And of course, we're aware of significant restrictions on media outlets uh, and civil society more broadly in Pakistan. Uh, here again, a vibrant free press uh, and informed citizenry are, are key for any nation and its future, including, including Pakistan. And I think these practices that we see undermine freedom of expression, they undermine peaceful assembly, uh, they undermine uh, Pakistan's image, uh, as well as its ability to, uh, to progress. So it is something that comes up both in our uh, direct engagements and in the work that we're doing every day. Global media watchdog Reporters Without Borders in its latest report showed that Pakistan slid from 145th position last year to 157th this year on the World Press Freedom Index. 
According to the International Federation of Journalists, Pakistan has been ranked the fifth most dangerous place for practice of journalism. Last year, many Pakistani journalists were killed, kidnapped and tortured for exposing crime and corruption and criticizing some of the government policies. Moving on, scores of people from Balochistan staged demonstrations across major cities of Pakistan on Tuesday against enforced disappearances of innocent Baloch civilians by Pakistani security forces. The protesters blame thousands have been internally displaced in wake of the ongoing China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project. Scores of locals and students from different educational institutions held protests in Pakistan's Karachi, Turbat and other major cities on Tuesday against enforced disappearances of innocent Baloch civilians by the Pakistani army and spy agencies. The protesters said while people were celebrating Eid, Baloch mothers were crying and hoping to have their missing children back. There have been numerous incidents of forceful abductions of Baloch activists and students by Pakistani forces over the past few years. And the protesters blamed even the media has been ignoring the plight of Baloch people. Activists have long accused that Pakistan army has been carrying so-called military operations in Balochistan targeting indigenous people for voicing dissent against the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC project. Thousands have been internally displaced in Balochistan because of armed conflicts and army operations over the years. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have expressed their upset over an acute shortage of wheat and black marketing of essential food items in the illegally occupied region. They alleged corruption by government officials and said they are being forced to pay high prices for food products amid an all-time high inflation. Residents of Gilgit, Baltistan have raised concern over an acute shortage of wheat in the illegally occupied region and black marketing of essential food products amid soaring inflation. Locals say that the subsidized wheat and other food items allocated for the region are being sold elsewhere by corrupt local officials and they are being compelled to buy flour at a higher cost. There have been several protests over the issue in recent months, but authorities have completely ignored their plight. Residents said that they will continue their strife until a wheat quota is maintained by the government. उसको पूरे इसलिए गवर्नमेंट को करना चाहिए कि वहाँ की जो सब्सिडी है उनको कांड छाटा है उसको नहीं करनी चाहिए उसके अंदर जो स्मगलिंग होती है उसके अंदर जो हेरा फेरी होती है उसको न करने ताकि यहाँ पर गरीबों को जो है और यहाँ के आम को सही तरीके से उपन्यासी in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's crucial parliamentary session began on Wednesday amidst the current economic and political crisis. Finance Minister Ali Sabri told the parliament that Sri Lanka plans to replace its current unrealistic budget and is in talks with the World Bank to extend its support. He warned that if the economic crisis is not managed properly, there could be a serious threat. Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Ali Sabri said on Wednesday that his country plans to replace its current unrealistic budget and is in talks with the World Bank to extend its support by 300 million US dollars to 700 million US dollars. The existing budget is unrealistic given our challenges, Finance Minister Sabri told a parliament session. We will bring in a new budget that will seek to address core issues of low public revenue, he added. The island nation hit hard by COVID-19 and short of revenue after steep tax cuts by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's government is critically short of foreign exchange and has sought an emergency bailout from the International Monetary Fund. 
Rampant inflation and shortages of imported food, fuel and medicines have led to weeks of protests that have occasionally turned violent. Sri Lanka will appoint within the next two weeks financial and legal advisors for a proposed restructure of its sovereign debt, Sabri said, adding that the government was keen to work with the IMF on structural reforms. Moving on to news from Nepal. Passengers were evacuated from the main gate of the Tiribuan International Airport in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Wednesday after airport officials received calls from a Pakistani number claiming that there were six to seven bombs in the airport premises. Domestic flight operations were halted for about an hour while police and army personnel conducted a search operation. Later, officials said that it was a Hawks bomb call and nothing suspicious was found. Services were immediately resumed after a note by the security agencies. A probe has been initiated into the matter. In news from Bangladesh, almost all the houses in a village in Bangladesh's Chaipai Nawab Ganj district, some 302 km northwest of capital Dhaka, are adorned with traditional art called Alpuna. In Thikol village, every mud house wall is canvas, while their inhabitants are artisans. The colourful motifs on the exterior walls of the houses have won the village the fame of Alpana Gram or art village of the country. Motifs on as many as 50 houses in the village are drawn by women. <laughs> Thousands of tourists are flocking to India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory to enjoy its serene beauty and pleasant weather as heat wave broils North Indian plains. A large number of tourists were seen visiting Srinagar to enjoy traditional boat rides in mesmerizing Dal Lake and witness the beauty of Mughal Gardens. Tourists are rushing towards the scenic valleys of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory as several states across the country are witnessing extreme heat wave conditions for the past few weeks. In many Indian states, including capital New Delhi, the maximum temperature is hovering over 45 degrees Celsius. A significant number of tourists are travelling to Srinagar to enjoy the Shikara or traditional Kashmiri boat rides in the mesmerizing Dal Lake. For many tourists, taking a Shikara ride on the lake has always been a priority during their visit. Away from the hustle and bustle of the city life, tourists are also fascinated by the beauty of Mughal Gardens and were seen clicking pictures with the amazing view. This is the best time to come to Kashmir and have fun. ये इधर क्लाइमेट आप देखें दिल्ली में जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल दिल्ली में आप देखेंगे आल बहुत ही गर्म है और लोग अपने कमरों में और एसीओ में बारे पड़े हैं बट आप यहां आइए यू विल फील रियली डिफरेंस Meanwhile, the traders and people associated with the tourism industry are happy with the response they are getting with the influx of tourists as this helps in boosting the region's economy which is also dependent on tourism sector. Along with horticulture and agriculture, tourism is an important industry for the region, contributing about 7% to its economy, according to the government data. It is expected that business will grow further in the coming months, as the heat wave continues its spell in northern India. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. PM Modi attends second India Nordic Summit in Copenhagen. Protests held against enforced disappearances of Baloch civilians across Pakistan. And Sri Lanka to replace unrealistic budget in talks to extend World Bank aid. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन